Good morning. My name is Amanda Alice. I use she or they pronouns, and I'm the director of religious education here at East Shore. I'm grateful to be sharing the story of the life of Jesus this morning with you all. At Easter time, we celebrate the life of Jesus and the way his spirit is still with us today. Jesus was a beloved teacher and his teachings went on to form the basis of the Christian religion of which we are descended. And that is why so many Unitarian Universalist congregations continue to remember Jesus and at other times other prophetic people whose wisdom has helped make the world a better place. So let us wonder together this morning about what we can learn from the story of the life and certainly the death of Jesus Christ. A long time ago in a land quite far away from here today, a bright star appeared in the eastern sky. And in the small village of Bethlehem, on this special night, a child was born. Jesus of Nazareth was born to his loving and miraculous mother Mary and his father Joseph. His parents were poor and Jewish and loved him tremendously. As a boy, Jesus learned to be a carpenter though not much else is known about these early years of his life, except that he was of sharp mind and a large heart. And it seems like he took the religion of his people quite seriously, so seriously that it began to set him apart. As he grew up and after he grew up, he traveled all over Israel, teaching and talking to people and helping people to heal. Jesus talked about being a loving person, about being kind, about helping those who need our help. And soon he became more and more well known. Whenever the crowds learned where he was, they followed him. And a small group of people traveled with Jesus as well, his disciples. A community grew and this community was a welcome community. He taught, Jesus taught that God's kingdom was not some far off dream to be yearned for, but something real to be built. And he began to build it with these disciples. He said that we could see God's love in our relationships with other people. Jesus's life was really all about transformation, about taking what seemed hopeless and transforming it into something abundant. For example, with only five loaves of bread, he managed to help feed 5,000 people. With vats of empty wine and nothing to drink but water full of bacteria, Jesus had made more wine appear. It seemed almost magical, the work of Jesus. Those he touched and met were deeply moved by his work. Jesus reached far and wide across society. He touched people that were tormented by madness, suffering from diseases or other deep lonelinesses of being an outcast. And somehow he managed through his words and his works to cast out despair and give people back a feeling of belonging and a sense of hope. He also taught that money wasn't the goal of life, that there was something deeper. In a temple that he felt was defiled by swindlers, Jesus got so mad and angry. He flipped the tables over and had the temples cleaned out and transformed back into a house of worship and inspiration, free from money. None of these teachings, however, were quite well received by the authorities. Neither the religious authorities or the authorities of the state. When they heard his description of the kingdom of God and that it was something that we were supposed to work for here on this earth, even though it wasn't quite really what was happening already, this cast quite a negative light on the Roman kingdom of Caesar. 
such egalitarianism was a threat to this status quo and the growing crowds that followed him, those were worrisome too. Jesus knew that he was upsetting the people in power. He was telling people that putting money first was wrong, that God loved all of his children, that we were to love ourselves and to love one another deeply. And those were powerful messages. Jesus knew he was going to get in big trouble with authorities and he kept on speaking and healing and teaching still. So Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the holy days of Passover. They came into the city on what we now call Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. There were huge crowds and people spread palm branches on the road. Jesus rode on a little donkey over the palm branches into the city. The night before Jesus died on what is now known as Maudie Thursday, Jesus was in fact celebrating Passover. Sometimes people call this the last supper. So on this celebration with Seder, he was with his friends and disciples. And while they were eating the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread in his hands and began to speak. I'm working to create infinite justice and I will never stop as long as I live. But you know as well as I do that as long as I live isn't going to be very long. Now that there is a price on my head, should I stop? Should I cave to the threats now that there, it might be violence against my body? And some of his disciples would encourage him, yes, it's hard to see those that we love go, of course. And Jesus replied, no, I will never stop. Just as this bread is broken so that the hungry may eat and be nourished, so my body will be broken because of my efforts toward the liberation of everyone marginalized and oppressed. He passed the bread around on this Seder meal. Whenever you share bread, share in the work of my body and in my life and work for justice and remember me. And on that same night, the celebration of Passover, unbeknownst to Jesus, one of his deepest friends betrayed him, Judas, and helped to plot against him. The next day when Jesus was only 33 years old, that's how old I am this year, the priests and bankers went to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, and demanded that Jesus be arrested. And then after he was arrested, those powerful people insisted that Jesus be put to death. In those days, criminals were sometimes killed by being nailed to a cross or crucified. And in fact, all those 2,054 some years ago, or 2,021 years ago, sorry, Jesus was killed by those very people who did not like him and called him a criminal. News of his death spread all over the land that the Messiah of Israel, the King of Jews, had been killed. People's hearts were broken at this news. And at sundown on Saturday, following his death, Mary Magdalene and other women who loved Jesus began to prepare spices to pour over his body, to wish him well and say a final farewell. When they arrived at his tomb, the women stopped at the entrance. After a few breaths, they stepped inside, ready to say goodbye to their beloved teacher. But they did not find Jesus in the tomb. Jesus's body had been placed in this cave, but his spirit had never died. While they were mourning Jesus's death, his friends and followers started to talk about their teacher with one another, what his life meant and the impact that he had had. And his spirit and his words and his deeds still give us wisdom today. His fight against fairness or against injustice and unfairness. He taught us that in this life and death, what would it take to make heaven right here on earth? Our sermon today from Reverend Fur will talk about how all of this can happen. But you should know that what Jesus said and what he did and the love he shared are still very much alive these some 2000 years later. <laughs>